Many of you probably know this is something that we deal with day in and day out um, in both Costa Mesa and Newport Beach. Hopefully, um, as an example, a couple weeks ago I sent a Hot Topics report about the third floor um, limitations that the city of Newport Beach was going to take. Hopefully, when you see, I know we send a lot of emails throughout the year, but if you see a Hot Topics report, I would really encourage you to read it. The planning department was planning on taking um, those third story, the third floor patios, all the enclosed patios, cabanas, all of that away. So that's now been put on hold and put aside for now. But these are things that I need you to know about. And so that's one of our goals is to make sure you're informed about what's going on in the communities and how we need to go about protecting those private property rights. So we have um, lots of committees. I would encourage everyone, every, I know a lot of you, and I know the um, talented, educational um, people in this room, and I know that you would all be a benefit to the association. A lot of you have fascinating backgrounds. I talked to someone on the phone the other day who um, actually I'd never talked to before. I met her on the phone. She had a whole different issue, and I found out she had a mediation background, and I thought, well, why are you not part of the Professional Standards Committee and helping us determine procuring cause and, and arbitration disputes with commissions and so forth? So I reached out to her on that aspect, and she's going to be joining the association. I know a lot of you have fascinating backgrounds like that, and you would be a true asset to the association. Um, another uh, committee that we have for the young professionals here, um, it's hard to break into uh, Newport Beach and Costa Mesa when you're young. And so we were one of the first in the area to establish a YPN chapter, a Young Professional Network chapter. And this committee has really gotten off the ground this year. Um, we have four or five lunch and learns and breakfast briefings that we have. We have one tomorrow that's coming up for, uh, we have speaker Kevin Sturdivant. And then uh, in March, we have the art of door knocking for um, Mark, Mark and Dylan 
are going to come out and talk about, you know, their, the way they do that. So the young professionals is really a benefit to you grow your network. Uh, Krista McIntosh is a big proponent of YPN, and she'll tell you that it increased her business. So if you're a young professional, please join us for that. Um, GPA, don't let the name scare you. Government, political affairs, we don't just talk about politics. We talk about the community chatter. What's happening? Costa Mesa has to come up with 11,000 units. Newport Beach has to come up with 4,800 units. Where are those going to go, and how is that going to happen? This is what we're talking about. This is happening. We want to focus on our communities, the welfare of our communities with responsible growth. And um, so I would encourage you all to get involved. You know your elected board of directors and your staff, we really care about bro your brokers and agents, and we really care that you are successful. And um, any way to get you involved in that process, I would love to talk to you about it. I do have an announcement, but I was really excited to share with you. So I was on the board of directors meeting for CRMLS yesterday, and they passed a motion to establish a new coming soon status. So that's going to be very interesting considering uh, the National Association of Realtors, you know, handed down these rules as of May 1st that within one business day of marketing a property, it has to be in the MLS. So figuring that all out, they've come up with the coming soon field, so you get it in within one day, you can still market it, there's no DOM count. But you can't do showings during that time. And I'm sure, knowing CRMLS, there's going to be a lot of strict rules that are going to go with that, that they're going to be establishing. But I'm excited to share with you that they passed this new status for you. So um, I'd also love to hear if any of you have any questions you'd like or concerns you'd like me to. Yes. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. I'm excited. I thought it would be helpful to tell the group how long you've been with our association. Oh, OK. Well, let's see. Um, I started young, in 92 I came to the Newport Beach Association and um, been doing like the events, the fashion show, the golf tournament, now the poker tournament and so forth and I've been the CEO since last February, so um, which is new. Gary was asking me, what's your title now? I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> CEO, can you believe it? So um, I'm really, really passionate about real estate. I'm really passionate about you and your business and how I can help you and what resources I can give you. That's what I'm here for and so that's why I'm here today. Yes. Um, I just want to say that we are thrilled to have Kimberly as our CEO. She's doing an amazing job and um, if you live in Newport Beach or work in Newport Beach, you need to be a member of the Newport Beach Association of Realtors. Play it out. That's it. I'm sorry. I feel so strongly about it. And I've been on the board for eight or ten years and been on the GPA, which um, I have found very, very interesting because I learn so much every time I go about what's going on in our city, but close to me, so it really helped me a lot in that. So there's just, and you know, we need to get back. We need to be giving back to what we are getting out of um, our views and our mission. Did anybody notice, because I, I did talk to a couple of people, did anybody notice the dues reduction on your dues billing this year? Because the board of directors worked very hard to bring that to you. So I was, that was a big event. <laughs> some, people, some people said I didn't notice. Well, that's, I guess, good. But. And I want to say, she was part of the, the reason why the dues went down. We went line by line, item by item, and she did a fabulous job. She already very good hands Aww. with her. Thank you very much. Position. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know how passionate we are about your business, and if there's anything that you need from us, that, that's what I'm, I'm here for. And, um, yeah. Uh, could you describe the current relationship that the local boards have with third parties such as Zillow and Trulia, where it is today, where you think it's going? Well, um, really the relationship is between CRMLS and Zillow and Trulia, um, not with the actual association, and the representatives for CRMLS are members of the association for the MLS. Um, I really don't know where the future of that's going to be. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have those answers, but if you give me your card, I will get them for you. <coughs> Did you have a question? 
Yeah, for agents that want to serve on committees, who do they contact? Uh, they can contact me, they can contact actually any of the staff. So YPN meets the second Thursday of every month, and GPA meets the third Thursday of, the, of every month. Grievance and professional standards deal with code of ethics and arbitration disputes, and they meet only as we have something that, that comes up. So that's kind of more infrequent. And then if we have an education committee that we established last year for those of you, some of you may already have like a GRI, GRI designation or a CRS designation or some of those, but those are some of the things that we're moving forward with that committee. And that meets like every quarter. So all you have to do is send me an email. I'm Kim at nbaor.com and I'll connect you where your passion lies. I would love to have you. Yes. Kim, how, how long for, for everybody, how long is a commitment for an agent to participate on any of the different memberships like ethics, et cetera, et cetera? Is it a year commitment? Not necessarily. You can come and try it out. He's asking how long the commitment is if you want to be part of a committee. Um, you can come in, you can try it out a couple of months and say, hey, this one isn't for me, and we can move you over to another one. You don't have to be committed. Some people tend to find that when they find what fits them, they stay, like Sue was saying. You know, she's been part of the GPA committee for years and years because it's a big, like, community chatter. You know, it talks about just the focuses of what's going on in our cities and how we need to establish our relationships. The big one that we've been talking about forever is the sign ordinance in Newport Beach. That's what GPA would talk about. And if you're passionate about that and you only want to serve for six months just to get that done, I'll take it, you know? Um, so I, I, I really think that we need to address the sign ordinance in Newport Beach again. I don't think it's realistic to our business and I, and I would like to see A-frame signs available and maybe one or two more directional and how about one for sale sign per frontage? These are some of the things that, that we worked hard at discussing and. Then there was this big lawsuit with the city on commercial signs and everything stopped. But it's time to readdress that. And so I'd like to see that happen. And if you're passionate about that, please come see me. I'll get, I'll get you involved. I'll find the fit for you. Okay. Yes. Kim, what is the perspective of the city on our board? We actually have very solid relationships and favorable relationships with not only the staff but our elected officials. We're very lucky. Um, I called Simone yesterday. I wanted to know about this 4,800 units and the resolution <clears throat> that the city passed to send to the state to argue that math and um, wanted to know, okay, well, what's the city doing as of today? What are we doing? So we sent the letter, but what realistically do we have to do now? They're still going to find where to put 4,800 units. So there's three areas they've designated so far. Uh, Banning Ranch, which we know is controversial, uh, the airport area, and Fashion Island. Now, 4,800 units, that's a lot of units. You're talking high rise, high density. And so, yeah, um, I don't, I don't know that they all have to be designated low income. They just have to have the units. So, um, Costa Mesa, I haven't really heard where they're designating their areas yet. Um, from what I know right now, they're just fighting the number. 11,000 is a lot. So, and where do you put them when you don't have lights to put them? So, you're going to tear down something else to build something? These are the questions that. So, I can click it on the phone and I can call Simone. I was um, also pretty upset at um, Peninsula Point when they went and took all that land out on the beachfront. You know, people considered that part of their property they kind of you know grew out and then the city went to the coastal commission to have that local coastal plan you know amended and they got a big no you have to remove it so those are some of the things I pick up the phone and smoke what is going on why how do we stop it how you know those types of things so um, and and Will O'Neill is a, is a really likes the association has been in the office um, talked about the development across the street, the Shahulian Sh property, and said, I didn't approve that big monstrosity. I'm like, well, I think you did. <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe you could just sum up that um, 4,800 unit requirement from the state. So Not everybody knows. Oh, so basically there is a number of properties that the governor has said that have to be built before 2024. And so the state board, 
SCAG, they call it, has designated how many, some type of math ratio, and I'm sorry, I don't know how they came up with it, but each city is required to have a certain number in the county. So Southern California got a ratio and then they divided it up. Um, Irvine, I think, needs 13,000 and, and um, Costa Mesa ended up with 11 and, and Newport Beach ended up with 4,800 and it was a lower number, but as they give other people relief, then other cities have to take on that number. Yes? I think we have Simone scheduled for the office. Today. February 4th. February. Oh, good. Tuesday, February 4th, Simone from the city will be here talking about this issue. Okay. Great. There you go. So you'll be the one that'll give you, you know, minute details on it. And it's fluid, so it's changing quite a bit. And that would be a really good presentation. Yes. Prop 13. <laughs> so uh, this is a big one because there's actually a potential of two issues on the November ballot on Prop 13. And, um, Howard Jarvis Association is working really hard because a lot of people have been signing petitions at the grocery stores and they tell you, you know, stop, um, stop the, you know, they're basically saying protect Prop 13, but what you're signing is something opposite. You're signing for split roll and you're signing for other things that are going to impede on that Prop 13 right. So if you go, if you accidentally signed or you know someone who has, you can go on the Howard Jarvis Association and a big red button at the top says how to get your name off that petition. So you can go and do that. Um, I know that um, the Realtors Association has a, um, do you remember Prop 5 a few years ago, the portability initiative where mm -hmm. over 55 you were able to move your property tax yeah. throughout the state as many times as you wanted. Well, they've come up with something similar to that. We found that there's something in there that we're not super excited about, so we're working to discuss that and see if we can get it out, and that is the elimination of the intergenerational transfer of that tax. So that's something that um, a lot of people aren't gonna like. So we, we, we are aware of it, and the Newport Beach Association, and the Laguna Board, and the Orange County Association, we're, we're a region for the state, and so we're working together and, and having talks on that right now to see what we need to do about that. But that's something that you need to know about because <coughs> I think they're getting the signatures and it's going to qualify. So, so we'll see. Once it qualifies, then maybe we can make changes to it, hopefully, and then move forward. But yeah, be aware because Prop 13 is a definite, it's a definite threat to Prop 13 because we know with rent control, we all denied it. November 2018, and then in 2019, the legislature passed it anyway. So they're not really, they're not really listening to the voters when it comes to those things. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And the first happy hour will be in our Newport Beach office on Wednesday, February 26th from 4 to 6 p.m. So I will have an invitation out to you guys shortly, but I just want to give you guys a heads up, and I hope you guys can all make it. Good morning, everybody. So, probably all know what we do first thing when I stand up there and talk about trees. trees. Um, so, Anyone want to take a guess at what our number is? 14,000. All right, so we're at And that's because of you guys. So every week we're keeping track and this is going up. So a couple things. Um, who knows what our goal is? You guys are so good. So anybody that is at home watching or in another office watching, I want to make sure that we keep repeating this because you guys know 50,000. But I posted on Workplace, why 44 trees? Who knows the answer to that? One person got it. Right, it takes 44 trees to build the average 2,500 square foot home in Orange County. So 44 trees to build one home. So we're replacing that footprint. So if you didn't know that answer back there, um, now you do, so you can respond. So Kathy DeAngelis, she got that right first, so we're planting a tree in her name, so congratulations. 
So, all right, we will. I will move quickly. Um, seen, um, I, I love this conversation with clients, and I love it. Oh, good. I tell them that. Uh, but you know, a lot of times they ask me, where are they being planned? And I know you one time said it. I love it. All over California. So. And through who? Uh, through One Tree Planted. So if we, do you want to um, click back on that page? Because there's a lot of information on here. Um, and it'll take you right to the One Tree Planted organization. And this is where we get, um, we partner with One Tree Planted here. And you can click on their website and it'll tell you all about our efforts and what we do. So it's $1 per sapling tree that gets planted. Um, so it's one of the better organizations. We did our research and made sure that the money that we're donating is actually doing what it says it's supposed to do. So. Um, you can read all about it. Um, so, and then moving on really quick, we've got a packed schedule. So we are working on agent business plans and marketing plans for you guys. So this is um, a work in progress, but we're going to be sending out in uh, the next week. And you guys can use it or not use it. Um, it's up to you. What it is is it's really a plan to map out your 2020. Like we talked about 2020 is a great year. We want to make sure everybody's on schedule. Um, this plan is going to show you what you can set up in automation so that you're not worrying about everything. You've got it all mapped out for the year. Um, it'll talk about your personal branding as well as property marketing. So once you see this, take a look. We're going to talk about what you've done in the past, what you've done in the future, and then we can sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and kind of capitalize on what it is your strengths are um, and where you want to go in the future. So the number one question that I want you guys to think about when you get this plan in your inbox is, what is your value proposition? Why would I choose you out of 100 agents in the room? And everybody's answer should be a little bit different. Um, and if you know it, if you know your value prop, awesome, great. If you don't, think about it. And um, I've actually gotten really good at telling people their value prop when they don't actually see it. So if you want to sit down with me or anybody in the office, um, we can kind of talk about that uh, moving forward. So look for this in the next week. Thank you. <laughs> Ask, do yourself a favor, open it. <laughs> okay. Since you only open about 45% of the emails, this is one I would advise you to open because it will help you with your business, it'll make your life easier, and you'll make more money. So please, take a look at it and come talk to us. Okay? Let's see. Elizabeth? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I know we've talked about this in the past, but we're going to start doing a weekly feature called Did You Know? And every week we'll be talking about something that we offer or something that we feel it's important to remind you about. And this week our Did You Know? is going to focus on our tree email. So did you know that at the close of escrow, we offer to send out this tree email to your clients, either your buyers or your sellers, letting them know that 44 trees have been donated in their honor by you, their agent. So this is what the email looks like. We can customize it with their name or it can just say congratulations. It talks about our program. It talks about 44 trees were donated for them. And then it gives them an opportunity to learn more about our tree program. In order to participate in this program, we will email you and we'll say, would you like to participate? We need your client's names their email addresses, and then we also will want to know if you'd like to make an additional tree donation. So the number that we offer is 44. If you want to round that up to 50, that means you're donating six trees, six dollars, and we'll build that to your invoice. So that's all we need to know from you in order to participate in this program. We go through, we set up the email for you, we send it out, it goes out from you, it doesn't come out from the company, and if the client responds, you are going to get those responses. So we try to make it as easy and streamlined as possible for you. So when you have a close of escrow, please be on the lookout um, for this email and let us know if you want to participate. So Where's the email coming from? The email usually will come from me, unless I'm on vacation. Then it will probably come from Cam or someone, another <coughs> employee. So be on the lookout. And that's your did you know for this week. <laughs> schedule for this week so like always at two o'clock today here in Newport is our study hall today it's going to be on how to promote an Instagram post and then we're also going to go over the studio's Facebook um, ad program as well so if you're curious to learn more about that join us at two o'clock today 
or if you can't make it, 3 p.m. tomorrow in Laguna. And on Thursday in Monarch, if you want, we have a class on Surtere Suite, so there's a refresher <coughs> course down there. But hopefully we'll see you all here at 3 o'clock for the um, CAR revised form, new and revised form class with Ruben and John. So hope to see you guys at some of those this week. All right, thanks. Yeah, well, Allison is making her way up. It's Slido time. Everybody's favorite name. So pull up your phone, go to slido.com, S L I D O, enter the event code hashtag Surtair to pull up Allison's questions for the day. So the first question is, the new 2020 agency high balance loan limit in the U.S. is A, $745,500, B, $765,600, or C, $725,500? And while you guys are doing that, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background how we even came up with the agency high balance loan limit. Because remember, until we had our great recession, we just had conforming loan limits and jumbo loan limits. And after the market crashed um, in 7, 8, 9, pretty much the jumbo lenders really pulled back. They were so nervous to go in and do loans. So our <laughs> government stepped in. It was under um, Barack Obama at the time. And they created what were supposed to be a temporary high balance <coughs> loan limit across the United States. And they looked at high cost areas and they created a loan balance that would help borrowers still be able to purchase a home without having to take a loan that was considered a jumbo loan. And at the time, uh, the difference between a conforming rate and a jumbo rate, I remember us talking about this, Gary, it was about one and a half percent. One and a half, sometimes it was even 2% once this all went down. So they created these temporary loan limits which were supposed to be in place just until our economy got back on its ground. But what happened is that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac started really endorsing and embracing this temporary loan limit and they found out that the rate of foreclosures and loans that were not performing in this temporary loan limit was safe, it was good. There was not that much more risk inherent in this new loan category. So they, every couple of years, they go back and we just keep having our high balance loan limit. So keep in mind, it's still sort of considered a conforming loan limit, but it is referred to as high balance. And I it just let everyone know, every county is different. Orange County is different than LA County, is different than San Diego County, Riverside County. Every county across the United States is different. So the high cost loan balances right now do we have 27? Is are there? Do we have any out, outstanding votes? Yeah, we do. How do you think? <laughs> it is 765-600. So this is um, this is our 2020 loan limit for Orange County. LA County does have the same loan limit, but again, when you're looking across the rest of California, the loan limits are gonna be a little bit different. The difference between a conforming loan and a high balance loan is about an eighth of a percent or so on the interest rate. So not much of a difference. Okay, next one. <clears throat> what does FICO stand for? A, Fair Intertrade Company. Two, Fair Isaac and Company. Three, Fair Isaac Corporation. Four, Fair Isaac Credit Organization. <coughs> this is a trick one. It's like an SAT. Yeah. <laughs> so eliminate the one you know it's not, and then make your make your choice. I can tell you that um, Fair Isaac came about in 1956. I believe there were two gentlemen, Bill Bill Fair and. Uh, Earl Isaac and so this agency was created in, in, um, in 1956 to really help lenders monitor um, credit risk with borrowers. Um, I want you to know there's kind of two answers to this Ruben because remember yesterday I gave you a different answer. So initially, we still have a couple more people that want to vote here. So initially it was 
people are having time to look this up now. Oh, probably. <laughs> initially, I think it was three seconds left. So initially it was Fair Isaac and Company. Initially it was Fair Isaac and Company. Years ago it changed to Fair Isaac Corporation. So it is Fair Isaac Corporation. Oh. Anyhow, okay, see how much smarter everyone is now, right? When your clients ask you what FICO stands for. Yeah. One other thing on FICO too that I just want to clarify is that there was an article in the Wall Street Journal um, this past week, and Jim Weisenbach brought it to my attention too, about a new model that will probably be coming out this summer. This new model is going to be two versions, 10 and 10T. Um, and I just want everyone to know, credit scoring is very complicated. There is a different model that is used for mortgages, there's a different model that is used for automobiles, and there is a different model that is used for credit cards and normal consumer credit. If you were to go online and run your credit, you would come up with a credit score online that might be, let's say, 900. And you're all excited, and then you go to a lender, and we run it, and your score is like 77, and you're like, how did my score go down by 130 points? So I'm here to clarify that on a mortgage credit report, the highest score that's even available, the highest is 850. But when you go to a car dealership, the, the model they use, it's at 1,000. So keep in mind that it's, it's all, they, they will vary. If the new model comes out on this 10 and 10T, the disparity on this is gonna probably be greater than what we're used to right now. The new model will probably take into account trends on your repaying your debts over the previous 24 months. We've never really had that. But that doesn't mean that lenders are gonna use just the FICO 10 or 10T model. Right now, the most commonly used one is FICO version eight which was created back in 2014. There's also a nine version, there's a four version. So every lender looks at it differently. What makes it different on the mortgage side and why we pull from three credit agencies and the three credit agencies that we pull from are TransUnion, Experian, um, and Equifax. And the reason lenders do all three is for this exact reason, that they all report different information. And so we don't average all three, we eliminate the lowest, eliminate the highest, and go with the middle score, which seems to be a pretty fair way to do it. So if this new model comes out um, this summer, which it should, again, it could be beneficial for people that have really worked on reducing their debt over the previous 24 months, but it could be detrimental for people if they've recently charged a lot on a credit card um, and plan on paying it off, but they don't have that history of doing it. I still think that after even Model 9 came out, most lenders are still using the version, the 8 version, so um, I'll keep you posted on that. Um, fast forward to what's going on over the last week or so, we've had quarterly earnings coming out, and out of the companies that have reported in the S&P 500, 70% already have beaten expectations. It's unbelievable, and that's why we've seen the stock market go on fire <coughs> until this coronavirus, which I'll address in a second. In addition, this morning we had consumer confidence came out and it was on fire. There was such a huge surge in consumer confidence. Um, Boeing also secured another $12 billion to help with financing for um, the max problems with their planes. The stock market loved that. So if you saw the stock market this morning, it was up like 270 points already. Um, durable goods orders rose another 2.5%. Two, two and then today and tomorrow we have the FOMC meeting with Chairman Powell expected to speak after the meeting tomorrow. There is a 0% chance that we're going to see a rate hike, but it will be interesting to see the rhetoric um, that he has after the meeting tomorrow as to what direction the feds are likely going to go in. Um, this was interesting. We talked about the debt and how our debt here in the U.S. government just skyrockets. So um, some three interesting facts here. The national debt increased 86% during George W. Bush's eight years as president. So again, eight years, it went up 86%. The national debt increased by 88% during Barack Obama's eight years as president. And now with Donald Trump in office for his first three years, it has only gone up 16%. So again, no matter what side of the fence you're on, it's important to note that it doesn't always matter whether it's the Republican or a Democrat in office, it's really what the economy is doing, and our economy, we've had this Goldilocks economy now for the last three years, and everyone was a little bit skeptical about what 2020 was going to bring. So far, everything from the conclusion of quarter four and 19, and going forward into 2020, so far looks really, really promising. With tax season approaching us, if you're worried about whether you're going to get audited, 
This is an interesting fact. Only one out of every 220 individual tax returns was subject to an audit. That's less than a half of a percent. Less than a half of a percent. And one of the reasons that number has gone down is the IRS is scaled back also, and they don't have as many people and auditors working um, for them any longer. Another fun fact here, 29.3% of American workers belong to a union in 1964, so close to 30%. Now in 2019, roughly only 10% of American workers are in a union. The number of existing single family homes for sale has been tracked for about four decades now, going back to about 1980, and it peaked at 3.4 million in 2007, and has now fallen to its all time high last December, a month or so ago, to 1.22 million. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, moving on to the coronavirus. So really, I never thought I'd get up here and discuss how we could have a health issue impact our market here. It is unbelievable, and I go to, I want to bring this up, what wasn't even a health scare, but was an issue that was going on. And now the market just responds so quickly to a lot of speculation. This is not a crisis yet. And when I started looking at some of the facts regarding the SARS virus that came out in 2003, is not nearly as deadly as the SARS virus. In addition, China, since 2004, so to now, they have really, really worked hard to work on contamination figures or, or ways to combat that, and it is much, much better now. So, but what, it, what happens when there's uncertainty across the world? What, when there's uncertainty, where does everyone want to put their money in the United States? And they want to come here and put it in our bonds, in our U.S. Treasuries. And so basically, yes, even though we've seen the stock market take a, a correction, it's kind of bounced back today. But really, it was due for some type of a correction. Maybe the coronavirus was an excuse for investors to sort of pull some of their profits. But again, look at what's happened now. And within five days, now the, bond or the stock market's back and we're approaching 29,000 again. It's crazy. But again, when there is uncertainty, International investors are going to come to the United States, and that's where they're going to park their money. Um, interestingly enough, we've seen the yield on the 10-year note drop below our point of 1.7. In fact, it dropped to about 1.62, but we really didn't see much of a rally in interest rates. And why is that? Because no one knows what tomorrow's going to bring. And lenders are way more patient now. Instead of pricing quickly and having another rate change throughout the day, they are waiting to see what happens. And social media definitely has an impact on this. So they're, they were, uh, they're much more patient with it. Um, we'll see what the next week brings. I know there's a couple cases of the coronavirus. I think they said in Irvine and, um, and other spots. But again, this is not nearly going to be as um, horrific as the virus was with SARS back in 2003 and 4. Any questions? OK, here we go. Morris, an 82-year-old man, went to the doctor to get a physical. A few days later, the doctor saw Morris walking down the street with a gorgeous young woman on his arm. And then a couple of days later, the doctor spoke to Morris and said, you're really doing great, aren't you? Morris replied, just doing what you said, doc. Got a hot mama and be cheerful. The doctor said, I didn't say that. I said, you've got a heart murmur and be careful. <laughs> Is Allison is a wealth of knowledge. And I can also tell you over, I don't know how many years, 20 years, whatever, known Allison, correct me if I'm wrong, she has never told a client that she can get them a loan and have to not perform. That's right. Never. So, if you want the straight story and to protect your clients, you'd be a fool not to use Allison, just let you know. So, uh, how many of you know that we have an agent recruiting program? I just learned last week from Christine. <laughs> it's amazing. We've had this for three years, okay? We've talked about it a couple times. It tells you that, you know, just like my wife and my kids, they don't listen to me. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to go over it again. We do have it, and it is, it's, uh, it has some criteria, okay? We want you to be able to get agents that you like, that you work with, 
and you are our best salespeople, so, and you know them better than possibly we do, so we would love to have your help. And we want the agents to be ethical. We want the agents to have a good reputation. We want the agent to be productive, $100,000 plus. We want to have someone's left. We want them to have left on good terms. So we have document here that you can fill out. We just ask that you bring the client into us, appointment, and you're going to get 5% of what they make for a year. And you'll get a check at the end of the year. Pretty straightforward. We've had it for three years. So we'd love to have your guys help on bringing over some good, good agents. Okay? I have something here that I just want to kind of go over a little bit. And it's called the Remedies for the Winter Motivation Blahs. As we know, I've always wondered why wintertime our numbers go down. Everyone just says it's seasonal. Okay? It could have the fact of we're not as motivated. We don't have the energy during the winter times because it's colder. People don't want to get out of bed. People don't want to go to work. Okay? Versus summertime, it's hot. You're ready to go. It's easy. It could have some things to do with it. So there's a few things that you could do to help that. One is to get moving. Okay? To get yourself motivated and get the energy, your body actually stores energy when it's cold. It, 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 it holds it back from going out there and, and, and wanting to go and go do things. It doesn't know what's going to happen, whether it's going to get more food, whether it's going to get energy, what, it, what it's going to do. So to counteract that, if you go out there and exercise, your mind and your body sits there and gets more energy. It gets motivated. So I'm telling you, don't you feel better after you exercise? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay? So we need to do whatever. I don't care if it's walking. I don't care if it's yoga. I don't care if it's playing tennis, bicycling. Whatever it is, this time of year is more important to go exercise than any other time of the year. And then two, what helps you go out and, and, and exercise. It's eating right. They say you are what you eat. Eating right helps you go and work out and go and working out to get you motivated. There's a few things that helps you eat right and it's the amino acids gets you stimulated <clears throat> and things you should eat is turkey, cottage cheese, egg whites, Seaweed, chicken, and duck. Those are the things that it says you should eat to get the amino acids to get your brain going. Okay? So if you get your brain going, you get your body going, you will have more energy and you will get get moving in the morning. Another thing that's that I, I like. Tune into pleasant past experiences. Think about, okay, you're sitting there not wanting to get up and go do an open house for four hours, right? But if you think about, wow, last year I did an open house and I got two clients. Oh, I, not, I know I need to make these phone calls. I just don't want to do that. But if I think back on a pleasant experience that I made a phone call and they wanted to meet with me. If you think about that, it will hopefully get you motivated to do the things you need to do. Next one, initiate, initiate or start, okay? It's tough to start a program. It's tough to get going. But if you take a little bit and accomplish that, it'll help you in the bigger picture. So I'll give me an ex I'll let me give you an example, okay? So your goal is to make 20 phone calls this week. And you're sitting there saying, I don't want to do that. So what do you do? I would call some friends, call some past clients that you're friends with, and talk real estate with them. And it's going to go pretty good because you know them very well, and they're friends. Then you move on from there. Then you maybe talk to a client you haven't talked to in a while. And then maybe move on from there, you call somebody that you haven't talked to. 
the little steps get in the bigger steps. And then the one I like, visualize a positive self image or belief. Visualize what it's going to do. Visualize yourself sitting at an open house, someone's coming in, you stand up, and you meet them, and you hit it off. Visualize that. Visualize that. We all focus on the negatives. Let's focus on the positives. Let's imagine the positives, and it will get you more motivated. And lastly, the one that my wife is definitely going to hate, and that is drink more coffee. <laughs> Most of you know, my wife doesn't let me drink coffee. Okay? She won't let me drink it because I have too much energy anyway. And then she says, when I drink coffee, I'm like a top going off. So, but it says that scientists have found caffeine can enhance some task, memory functions, stimulate you, and motivate you. Yes. So I'm going to start drinking coffee. So you guys will know why. Okay? So, you, you know, we always said, when does the market start? The winter months. When does it start? Super Bowl. After Super Bowl. Right? Set it forever. Well, I'm here to tell you that is false. It is false this year. I will say last year, I believed it. The last few years, I agree. This year, it's wrong. Okay? The market is now. The buyers are out now. We have, last, I'm going to give you just a couple of statistics. I'm telling you, if you're not out there working now, if you're not doing open houses, if you're not making your phone calls, you're going to be, be beat out by your fellow agents. You need to get off the after Super Bowl, I'm going to start working. You better start working now. You better start doing all the things you know you need to do today. And let me tell you the reason why. The active listing inventory increased by 122 homes in the past two weeks. Up 3%. And now totals 4,023. Any guess at what it was last year this time? Which we all thought last year was a little difficult? 58, about 7,500. 6,122 homes. Okay? 2,099 more homes than today. 52% more houses today. I mean, last year than today. 52% more houses last year than today. Okay? The market has totally changed. Now demand, that's deals that are in escrow. The number of pending sales over the prior month increased by 268 pending sales in the last two weeks. Up 19%. Now totals 1,702 deals in escrow. Last year, there were 1,435 deals in escrow. 19, 16% fewer than today. If that doesn't get you motivated to start working, I don't know what will. The market is hot today. We have not seen this start of a market in many, many years. All right? I don't know how long it's going to last. There's a lot of things coming down the pipe with the uh, elections, impeachment, and all this that may put some people on the fence. But right now, the buyers are not on the fence. And we need to take advantage of it today. Okay? Any thoughts? Yes? You can also play ping pong in your business attire right here. Absolutely. Don't forget, we have ping pong. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> we need to pull that up this year. We're going to start playing more. Well, we're already playing this afternoon. We have, a, we have a game going. So. Good. Good. I want to join. <laughs> well, this is just fun to change the, the pace of your day. Absolutely. You're working on the computer, whatever. Get out and move a little bit. And I love it. Thank you for that. I love it. That's great. Any other comments? Any other thoughts? John, you want to push up the next week for you? Or you yeah, I mean, just, just real quick. Um, there's, there's some new forms that people may not be familiar with related to leases. There's been some changes. 
there's been some struggles. We want to talk about, thanks Kim, about talking about um, some things going down with NAR, CAR, with CRMLS. We, Ruben and I at, at 3 o'clock at Newport here are going to talk about, are we taping it too? Should. If we should tape it for anybody who can't attend, but it's really important to attend because you can ask questions. You can't ask questions over the computer. But we're going to talk about if anybody's struggling with S SELM as opposed to using the CRMLS form and what those mean and how you do it, who's doing it, you or, or staff, to upload to CRMLS so you don't get fined, okay, and be in compliance with on market, not market, can I market it? what days on market, etc. We'll explain that because it's still confusing to a lot of people. What is the CCPA? And um, what are some issues related to um, leasing right now with applications, criminal backgrounds? How does my client deny an application? There's assistance through the CAR for you guys. And then there was a one. Uh, oh, and then there's a new form that people may mysteriously use instead of our regular exclusive uh, form. It's the reserved seller. <coughs> and I want to explain <coughs> reserved seller listing form, and it might look enticing to people, but uh, we're going to talk about why it is not the form you're going to use. Okay. So those are some of the things that if you're if you're questioning some things or you need a refresher course, please attend at three o'clock on Thursday here, or at least watch it whenever you're available to do it. I think it'll be really helpful for you. Hey, perfect. Want to talk about your listing? Sure. Good morning. I'm Chris Marino in the Newport Beach office. We have a great listing. It is 310 Encina in East Bluff. It's a single level home, three bedrooms, two baths, just a little over 1,500 square feet. Uh, the house was just recently painted and staged. We're listed at $1,199,000. And we'll have it open today for uh, office preview. We do have a couple of showings today. As soon as I hit Sam last night, <clears throat> Brie LaPont you know, texted me like that and said, can I show it tomorrow? And all I thought is, oh my gosh, I haven't put this on for office tour. So I wanted to give all of our office members a shot at it first. Really easy to show. Um, let me know if you want to see it. And I know we have Camille showing it during broker preview or during our office preview today. So be aware there will be a potential buyer in the property. What's yes, the address? 310 Encina. It is on the corner of Vista del Oro and Encina. And it is a very pretty home. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, it's priced well. What was it? One point. One million, one, one, one point two. Thank you for all coming today. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Great. Anybody else have anything? Come on up. That staging was only 3500 um, She does a great job. Her name is uh, Andrea McQuaid. So if anybody wants a stager's convert, they do a really good job um, for a low price. Um, I have a property coming up in Newport uh, Ridge area. It's 4,500 square feet. We've been working on it the last month, get it painted, get it fixed up. It's 4,500 square feet, uh, five bedroom, four baths for $2,399,000 really good deal and should go right away. Oh, and <laughs> uh, you're poor rich at uh, Provence. Okay, great. Great. Anybody else? Good morning. Adrian Brandis, the Newport Beach office. I have a new listing at 211 Iris in Corona Del Mar in the village. It's being painted as we speak, staged Monday and Tuesday of next week, photographed Wednesday, but we will have it on broker preview Thursday. So if you want to see it, rather than waiting until the following Tuesday, there's only one other 200 block listing available in the village at the moment. Um, it's an older home in amazing condition, and then the staging is going to take it to a whole new level. We're going to do a whole modern thing. Um, it's got fabulous ocean views from the front patio, from the master bedroom. It's got four <coughs> bedrooms, which is unusual for a 30 foot by 118 lot just shy of 3,000 square feet. Um, Iris is probably one of the better streets, I think we would all agree, in the village on that side of Marguerite. And the asking price is 47, which is a little aggressive, but we have a built-in price reduction in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Great, anybody else? The buyer wants? Well, appreciate everybody coming. We'll have some breakfast.
Oh, yes. 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 Yes.